Amen, amen. And the scripture reads, when Jesus returned to Capernaum, mm -hmm. several days later, it said that the news spread quickly that he was back home. I'm reading out a New Living Translation. Soon, verse 2, soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors mm -hmm. that there was no more room even outside of the door. While he was preaching, talking about Jesus, God's word to them, mm -hmm. four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So they dug a hole through the roof above Jesus' head. Mm -hmm. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Wow. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. For the Lord, you have to help me in the name of Jesus. Now, you have to understand something. Whenever you read a certain passage of scripture, Right? You always have to go to the previous scripture, what was previously stated. Mm -hmm. I can just pick up this word and pick up and read a scripture. Because that scripture starts, it's, it's a continuation of something else. Yeah. So right before this, they said a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus. That's in verse 40. Begging to be healed. He said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Move with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched them. He said, I'm willing. And he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared, and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell nobody about this now. Instead, go to the priest and let them examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened, what Jesus had did. As a result, large, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. Uh -huh. Y'all follow me, right? Uh -huh. He had to stay out in secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. Watch this. Wow, wow. that's good, sir. Now, we talk about Jesus, he reached Capernaum, he was in the other region, right? Before, before he was there, he, was, he healed the man with leprosy. Because he healed the man, uh, back in the day, they had a lot of leprosy going on, right? So Jesus not only healed the man, but he said, man, don't go tell nobody. Don't go tell nobody, I gave you nothing. But the man went and told everybody, and because he told everybody, that everybody knew who he once was, they said, wait a minute, hold up, man. I knew you was you was messed up, man. All your fingers was coming off. Now you got all your fingers. And because the people that knew him saw that he was healed, crowds followed Jesus. They followed him so much that Jesus had to go to secluded places. Wow. He had to go to the dunk hall. Yeah. Not the club, not the club. Oh, he was too good. You understand? They don't still hear that no more. Not the club. He had to go to a, seclu a secluded place to get away from the people because he was a healer. I know if I'm sick, I'm, I'm dead. I'm, yeah, Jesus, you need to get rid of this cold. We get here and Jesus returned to Capernaum seven days later from where he once healed the man with leprosy. Seven days later, right? And the news spread quickly. Now Jesus in this house. And you know, I'm paraphrasing. I'm saying my mom said that Jesus said such and such. I'm paraphrasing. Now imagine Jesus in the house. And the house is crowded. It's Mardi Gras in the house. Y'all y'all familiar with Mardi Gras, right? It's crowded up in the house. And Jesus is in there teaching the people. See, whenever there's a good word, people are coming. So Jesus is in the house. He's teaching. He's doing what he was born to do, what he was created to do. 
right? So he's teaching the people and they had a crowd where the crowd was so big, so large that the people couldn't even get in. Y'all know how a, a field would get packed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Field get packed. Nobody can get in. All the seats filled for a funeral. Yeah, but they ain't feeling the people business before they leave the earth. Praise the Lord. Right. Just keeping it real. And so nobody couldn't get in this house. We on 5123 Dolph Main Street. Jesus in the house, he's preaching. Jesus in the house, he's teaching. And nobody couldn't get in because it was crowded, right? And what the scripture says that they had four men carrying a paralyzed man. When they got to the place where Jesus was, they couldn't get in. We had 5123 dollars feet. So obviously, they didn't live in the neighborhood. Obviously, they didn't live down the street. Obviously, they didn't live around the corner or a couple of blocks down. As a matter of fact, they didn't need to live on Cleveland because if they lived in the hood, in the area where Jesus was, they probably would have got in the house. Right? And so they get there. They came from Lord knows how far to get to the place where Jesus was because the world was around. Hey Amen. The man is in town. <laughs> Tupac in town. Everybody want to go to used to go to Tupac concert. He in town, man. We got to get to him. We got to get to him. So everybody running because they're in the hood. They can get to him quick. But these four men, they get there. Uh huh. And they say, well, we can't get in. Now, four men carrying a man, another man. So, the scripture don't say they were brothers. The scripture don't say, you know, they friends or nothing. They just say four men carrying a brother. So, if you know, like I know, ain't no brothers, no four men carrying another brother they don't, that they don't know. Right? So, either they were related or they grew up together. So that's telling me that obviously this man was a paralyzed his whole life. Uh -huh. That somewhere along the line, they probably used to be out there playing football. You know they didn't play football back then. But they probably was out there throwing spears or whatever they was doing. I'm paraphrasing. So if they was doing whatever they was doing, and somewhere along the line, he must have had an injury that messed up his spinal cord because he was paralyzed, right? Uh -huh. That's what happened when you can't walk. And something got to happen in the back. The smile. And so they get them four men carry them. They get in front of the building, they put them down. Looking down at their problem. They ain't say they ain't tell them nothing. They say, man, we can't get in. While they was there, I believe they were there strategizing and thinking. She man. Dude here, he, 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 we can't carry him around, you know, for the rest of his life. You know, we got things to do. We may want to go to club maybe or something like that. And so they got him on the ground and he's sitting there. And the scripture said that they went up to the roof and dug a hole in the roof. Sometimes you have to do something different to get different results. Yeah. You see, the reality is they was on a lower level. The normal thing for them to do was to turn around and go back where right uptown. The normal thing for them was to do to turn around, go back across the river, West Bank, wherever they wanted to go. The normal thing for them to do was to go back to VR or slide out or where, wherever they wanted, wherever they came from, because we know they came from a long distance. The normal thing for them to do was to give up. But they didn't. They said, man, as long as we down here, we can't get to Jesus. The normal thing for them to do was to just stand outside 
and wait for somebody else to come out, out the club before they even get in. You know when the club get crowded at the end. You know when it get crowded, you can't get in until somebody come out. You understand? And so the normal thing, man, we're going to wait till somebody come out. The normal thing for a couple of people, because one person can't come out, we need a bunch of them to come out so we can go in. But the abnormal thing was to think outside of the box. You see, these men were deeply concerned about their friend and wanted to see him help. And so I went to thinking about that as I was reading. And I went to thinking about people. And the conclusion I came up with was who's in your circle? Who's wow. in your circle? Wow. How many people you have around you all day on a daily basis leeching off of you? How many people, they see you struggling for that and you know where they're in a good place and they ain't willing to help you? How many people you know ain't, ain't willing, they have the game but they ain't willing to give you the game? Because as long as you below their feet, And it's torn down. They got trees and brushes all over it, right? 
You can buy that house for about 50 grand, right? You can buy it for 50 grand. Nothing wrong with the foundation, but it need to be some things need to be replaced. Some windows, some roof. First thing you do the roof, and then you you begin to do the windows and uh, replace the boards and all these things here. Then over a period of time, and you you bring everything together. You take fifty grand, you put it in there, take another fifty, sixty grand, you invest it in there, and after you finish with all your investment, guess what happens? The value increases. So you got a hundred and twenty in, and now the value of it worth about two eighty. How do you increase your value? Glad you asked. By reading God's word. That's good. By studying God's word. Mm -hmm. By meditating on God's word. Mm -hmm. By praying without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And fasting. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, desperate move calls for desperate measures. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, sometimes you gotta increase your faith. You increase your faith by reading God's word, right? You gotta go, uh, uh, you gotta, you gotta advance from where your normal ties. And I just give you two dollars. Your check was about three hundred something dollars. I'm just giving church. Some people get stuck on that, right? I ain't talking about nobody in here. Some people get stuck, and this, you know, I'm just, you know, you know how you go in your pocket and you peel. Yeah, and give them, let me get the church this little dollar right here, the two dollars, or whatever it is. I used to do it, I'm dead. Don't judge me, I did it. You understand? So I know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. This feeling, but over a period of time, because I had, had to get the word in me, right? And when I began to sow, it came back a hundredfold. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it began to come back before the day out. Went from praying for uh, our fallen world in heaven to praying for a, a three minutes, to praying to five minutes, to praying for 15 minutes, to 30 minutes, to an hour, to two hours, to three hours. God wake me up two o'clock in the morning and I'm praying for four hours. Laying down on my face, pouring my heart out, saying, Lord, you got to take this away from me. I was still running the streets. Praise the Lord. I keep it real. But you have to understand this. These men came. It doesn't say from where, how far. But it had to be from afar because if they were living in the neighborhood, they would have been right there. In order for you to get to the next level, you have to do something different. Yes. There has to be a sacrifice. And I ain't talking about people, you know, all that, cutting yourself and all that. There has to be. He said, man, you, I beseech you therefore, brother, that you present yourself a living sacrifice. Pray and fast. You have, and it's a must that you do that. And, and, and it's not going to happen overnight. I can keep it real. I didn't believe in it. I started mine in prison. While I was locked up, and the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. You have to do something different to get some different results. Good, Jesus returned to that place in Capernaum. Seven days later, the news spread so quickly he was back home. Soon, uh, 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 the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room. Even outside the door. My, my, my. They didn't have no room. But they didn't give up. That's How many people give up on all daily? That's that's, that's that's sir. There's always room at the altar. Yeah. And your altar don't even have to be in a church. Yeah. Your altar can be in your bedroom. Yeah. Your altar can be in your car. Yeah. I had to tell a young brother, I said, man, look. You want to shift your mindset? Put on some worship music. My God. If you want to put on some worship music, I like classical music. I listen to Beethoven. You understand? Because guess what? It develops a mindset. Put some worship. Transform that way of thinking. Yeah. Right? Because you God can't get through you if there's a bunch of trash. Uh. A bunch of garbage 
lying around. See, the enemy, his job is still kill and destroy, and he can get in the mind. He likes to get in there and wreak havoc in there. He will bring a storm to your house, a storm to your doorstep, right? But when you plead the blood of Jesus, he can't get in there. But the minute you give him a little inch, he's going to take me over. He's going to take me over. When it was all said and done, the paralyzed man, Jesus said, man, look, my child, your sins are forgiven. He had to do something before to get where he was in that condition. So in order for you to better your condition, you got to allow God to put you in a better position. But it starts at the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I am happy. Ooh, I ain't saying that this long. You see, it's still in me. You have to do something different to get some different results. It's time out for playing church and be the church that God called us to be. Because the enemy he plays the keeps. It is a must that you feed the blood in your household. It is a must that you pray, pray over your children because right now he's attacking the mindsets of the children. He's attacking their mindset and because he can't get to you. And when he can't get to you, he gets to the closest thing to you. And when he try to get to the closest thing to you, and I ain't saying that we're not praying over our children, but I'm saying that he's after the future. He's after the future. When we know better, we do better. Think different. Be different. And do different. Let the word of the Lord be blessed.